Okay, in this video, we are going to look at the carbon microphone and how to build a simple carbon microphone. Now, the carbon microphone came into existence in 1878, and there's a few people working on it. There's David Hughes, Alexander Graham Bell, Berliner, Edison, and the invention of the telephone used the carbon microphone. Now, the audio quality isn't that great, but it had good sensitivity, it could work on a very low voltage, and it had a high signal output. So this is my very simple microphone, which you can see here. So I have a sounding board, and I have two carbon rods in, in, inserted into the sounding board. And these carbon rods are actually pencil lead. And I have another carbon rod straddling the two stationary carbon rods. Now there's a DC current flowing through the loop. And as I tap on uh, the sounding board, you can hear it's very sensitive. So as I tap on the sounding board, I'm changing the contact resistance of this carbon rod. I'm getting an AC current now flowing through the loop, and that's being amplified. And that's what we hear. That's our signal. And there's actually feedback. I actually could get feedback because it's so sensitive. I actually had a fly trapped under a plastic cover, and he was walking on the on the sounding board. I actually could hear the fly walking on the sounding board. Now, on a the telephone, they use uh, something different. It's a little bit of an upgrade. They use a mic cartridge. Inside this mic cartridge, there's carbon granules. It's kind of like coal dust. And as you speak, you compress the carbon granules, and you get an AC current. And that's your uh, voice signal for the telephone. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of my simple carbon microphone. And you can see my three carbon rods, and it forms a current loop. So here's my 12-volt power supply. So we've got current flowing through a 620-ohm current limiting resistor through the primary of the transformer and then back through the, the carbon rod. So that's our DC current loop. Now when we tap on the sounding board, we're going to change the contact resistance of the carbon rod. That's going to cause an alternating current through this loop. And when we get alternating current going through the primary of this transformer, we're going to have a signal on a secondary. Now this is a step-up transformer. The primary is 150 ohms. Secondary is 600 ohms. So we'll have a signal output on our 600 ohm uh, winding. Now the parts aren't very critical. We could use uh, 9 volts instead of 12 volts. You could use a different resistor. I've, I've used 220 ohms. I have a capacitor that bypasses the, the battery or the power source and the, and the resistor. So it gives it a little bit more gain th for the AC uh, to get around the, the resistor and the, and, the, and the power supply. So the parts uh, values aren't that critical. You could play around with uh, different values. But that bit, that's basically the circuit there. It's very simple. All you need to do is get some carbon rods and build this little circuit for your little simple carbon microphone. Okay, I have a carbon microphone hooked up to my circuit. So inside this cartridge there's carbon granules and as I speak the pressure, the sound waves of my voice will compress the granules and it will change resistance and we'll get a different current flowing through the microphone. Now that AC current will be our signal. Now there's other types. This is, this is another type of a carbon uh, cartridge. works on the same principle. It has uh, granules inside. And this is very sensitive. You can see I'll tap on it. Now if I, if I do a voice test I'll probably get feedback. Test, test. And you can see it's very, very sensitive. I'm getting about a 6 volt peak to peak output from my transformer. It's a very sensitive, uh, very sensitive microphone. And that's what's used in the telephones, and they actually used these up to about 1980. And then they went to the new phones, they used electric or dynamic mics. But back until then, they were still using the carbon microphones. Okay, here's the inside view of a carbon microphone. So we have a metal cartridge which contains the carbon granules, and we have a flexible front that when we speak, this will flex according to our, the sound pressure of, of our sound waves. Now as the sound waves flex this diaphragm, it's going to change the resistance of the, of the granules. And the harder uh, we, we compress the granules, the lower the resistance. So we're going to have one lead connected to the outer case of the, of the cartridge, which is metallic, and we'll have the other lead feeding into the granules itself. So it's going to measure the resistance of the granules. So as we speak, we're going to get a different uh, resistance changing according to our, the pressure of the sound waves. So this output is fed into a current loop. 
So as it's fed into the current loop, as the resistance changes, we're going to get an AC signal. And that AC signal can be fed into a transformer and then into an amplifier. And that will be the output of our carbon microphone. Okay, here's the components for my microphone circuit mounted on my breadboard. So basically I have three components. Here's my transformer, my current limiting resistor, and my capacitor. Now the capacitor is optional. You can leave that out. It will still work. So basically we have the two main components, transformer and the resistor. And the value of the resistor, I have 620 ohms. You could use 220 ohms. That will also work. And for the transformer, you could use even something like this. It's a Hammond 149T. It's a 600 ohm to 600 ohm center tap transformer. And that will even work. So uh, parts aren't critical, just dig up what you can and build up the circuit and here's your input where you hook up your uh, microphone circuit either the carbon mic or the, or the microphone, or the simple microphone using the carbon rods. So there's a circuit there and there's my output and you could feed that into a little amplifier so you could monitor your microphone output. Now when I was in elementary school I took a book out of the library it was called A Boy's First Book of radio and electronics. And in this book showed me how to build my first crystal radio. But if you go down to page 202, you can see a, a carbon microphone there, made from carbon rods. So I took carbon rods out of a D battery, D sized batteries. I, I took the carbon rods out and I used a pencil LED and I made my first microphone. That was my very first electronic project I've ever done. And that's what got me started in electronics. And that was my career. So the thing is, you gotta you gotta actually do it. You actually have to build, experiment, even with I say microcontrollers. You gotta get in there, experiment, build. That's how you get started. Maybe it will even start your career.